welcome Alex to Metalator Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about one of the, the one of the mythic bands in, in, in Germany, it's, it's Atrocity, now from this new album, Occult 3, and more things related to the metal world. And starting with a common question, how have you been during these crazy times? We started a pandemic two years ago, now a war in Europe, it's a crazy times. So no, who knows what the next couple of years, perhaps an invasion, a meteor will hit us and America save us like, like all with Hollywood movies. Who knows what happened? <laughs> yeah, we're going from one uh, crisis to the other, right? <laughs> yeah, actually, <clears throat> if you see it like that, your occult uh, free album is the perfect soundtrack for the end of the world. <laughs> as, <clears throat> actually, I'm serious here, as like we were, uh, you know, collecting all kinds of the darkest history, um, you know, evidence uh, and, and happenings and lo locations, people uh, uh, from, from uh, you know, the, the dark history of uh, humankind. So, as you see now, it all repeats itself. And uh, it's also a little bit, I'm wondering, it's a terrifying fear. It doesn't matter in which uh, kind of system is still controlling people. If it's, if it's a democracy or if it's a dictatorship or in religion, fear is the big theme. And this is what we, it's on repeat, what we'll be going through ever since like in a vicious circle. And we, when we started the, the Occult Trilogy, that, because people think about Occult Eyes is only about Satanism, no, it's not. It, it, it's a bright field. It also includes things like this happening. You saw it in COVID times, a lot of manipulation. You saw it in, uh, in now when the war started, a lot of manipulation again, a lot of uh, uh, tricks, uh, uh, and, and also with the energy crisis, the next, the climate crisis. It seems like, you know, that people are in constant um, fear. What happens next that you just said it? And if you roll it all back into the 80s or whatever, when the metal artworks were like containing hurricanes, uh, ca catastrophes, virus, epidemic, or war, or nuclear threat, or pollution, uh, and everything seems to come, uh, you know, on, on repeat again. And, uh, and this was like dark prophecies and, and, and all these are dark topics, but it's the reality, right? I'm just waiting for the zombie apocalypse. When is this going to happen now? <laughs> <laughs> More sugar people. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. yeah, so actually we have the soundtrack for this dark days. A crazy, crazy world needs crazy music. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. That's true. So now talking about, about the, from the new occult tree. So what do you decide to, to divide in a trilogy, the name occult and one, two, three, and not just, just perhaps in a, triple disc for, for just one album. Yeah, well, when we started the whole thing, uh, now it's one decade when, you know, it concludes yeah. now and it will be released next year. And it was also no plan that it will take so long. Of course, it has also in this case to do with the, with the, you know, with the overall situation. When we were recording stuff, sometimes only one guy had to, was allowed to come here and we had to work uh, only with two people, you know, uh, like in COVID times and stuff like that. So um, the thing is, um, also people were asking me uh, if we're going to release something like you mentioned, like a, a free disc uh, with all the occult um, albums uh, and 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 have, have like a, a big product. But the thing was like, where I have to start now is like, we were doing the Atlantis record, and it was something, a huge field as well. You know, it starts with a Greek mythology, then you have like all kinds of um, flood legends in, in all kinds of cultures around the globe, and they are kind of connected. Like you have, for example, in Africa, it's called Atlantio. In Latin America, Aztlan was the name for a kind of Atlantis. It's the same mm -hmm. legend, you know, civilization going down, People have to flee, and um, yeah, that's why a lot of people were, you know, um, having the the idea that could be the cradle of modern civilization could be Atlantis, but that's only one part of it. It goes like this is such a huge field. People believed it was like aliens coming with UFOs, founding that on Earth, 
or the Nazis also have their own theories about the alien race connected with Atlantis. They even sent uh, expeditions to the Himalaya to find, you know, evidence for that. And uh, it's such a huge field. Uh, you know, in the spiritual world, Atlantis is also very important for people. Um, as they think, yeah, that's connection to the old ancestors and the ancient ones is also connected with Atlantis. So anyways, in these times I knew what could be the next challenge? And I was thinking, okay, uh, with all this, you know, background of the occult stuff, like of hidden secrets and stories nobody really heard about, or even, you know, uh, if you pick out some, you know, completely obscure stuff, uh, like we had already with La Mousine on on the first occult record, where politics and religion are completely crossed, and uh, in in a in a kind of uh, um, yeah weird story which starts like there's a witch selling poison to the aristocrats and they kill each other with the poison right in paris and then at the end it comes out in uh, when when they when the judges they realize there's something more going on so they had a they had a call place with with it was called uh, with the ch chamber with the candle candles they were hiding it from the public so nobody could find out what the aristocrats are really doing. The thing was, it came out later that actually uh, the witch, which was like uh, um, uh, having a death uh, penalty, so she was killed, that actually she was assistant to a, a Catholic uh, bishop who was a satanic priest who was sacrificing babies to, for the rich and the, and the aristocrats, uh, they were thinking with that help, they will make a career. And one was like the maitress of the French king. And this all was so crazy. And they found like 1,000 corpses of, of infants in the backyard of this lady, which was a witch from a, 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 a witch circle poisoning. That was one of the job, but the other was much worse when they kill each other well but you know to go to the poor and telling them oh we will take care of your babies and all that and then doing this satanic rituals and that what it was really happening and a lot of people said this whole thing even was like one of the steps for the french revolution you see that is it starts like and i just explain it probably you go like wow what is he talking about from from one thing to a completely completely other thing and that was like my goal to pick out stories to have like a evil dark also bombastic epic and brutal uh, album trilogy where we have things like that because i was always interested in history dark history as well and also cool stuff so i thought like okay sickest mankind stories or mysteries of the world this is not doable in one album and now it's 10 years. <laughs> also, I, I cannot hear you now. Okay, you Third time. Third time, yes. Third, ten, 10 years from the first album from Occult. Well, now, if, if we try to relate this aspect that a lot of occultism, a lot of, a lot of the music, a lot of the experience that you told me. So for you, what is the biggest difference that exists in this Occult tree from the se second and the first one? Because it's, well, as you said, it's, it's in a... It's not like a trilogy, but what, for you, what is the main difference that exists already in music? I think, uh, yeah, music-wise, that's the good part on, uh, of it. As we also were thinking this from the start, it, it doesn't make sense if they all completely sound the same. But it should be like an evolution. You know, it should be like, um, you know, a uh, homogene uh, a, a concept needs, a, a, like, music fitting to it. So that, that was like, this what I just explained, like with, with like epic, brutal and dark stuff, you know. So that was obviously like the overall concept for the music. So I think every album can stand for itself. And the new one, I think it is like a riff monster. That was super important to me to have like killer riffs, killer songs with killer riffs, with brutal guitars, but also having this occult atmosphere. You know, if you listen to Sipka, the start of the song, and um, also like a Bleeding for Blasphemy, they're having this 
cool mm. melodies, uh, uh, suiting very much to the continent. And of course, we have some songs, uh, but not so much, uh, with some symphonic par parts in there as well, like this equation of God or malicious succubus. You know, um, that was like to spice up, you know, the, the songs uh, in a way, like to have it like in a horror soundtrack or something, or metal. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. Now we're talking about all these aspects, especially from the in general from the history of the band. So I'm talking a little about the history, as I said, of the, the band. So how do you see the comments of the band through the years? Because you are one, you are the last members since atrocities, since you called instigator in, in yeah. 1895, when you played grindcore, then you played technical death metal, then you played death metal with gothic stuff. Now you play that metal industrial stuff. A lot of things, a lot of things needs happen. So, how do you see the comments of the band through the years in front of the of the changes of the musical style that you had? I think uh, atrocity stands for musical freedom. And actually, the law of heavy metal is breaking the law. Yeah. So, and that's what we what we doing. You know, we 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 of course we have our death metal roots, and actually. Um, I would say we even started more like thrash or hard metal, so to say. And, um, you know, this genre thing, uh, putting a band only in one genre or people were telling us, oh yeah, Hallucinations was the first te techno death metal album. Now it's a whole genre called techno death metal. And, um, well, we also used German lyrics when nobody did, you know, in that way we did, like in a, in a serious way, not like in a punk band or something. But that German punk bands, of course, use German lyrics, but in their way. But like Todesian, so for example, was a very dark, uh, explor uh, explornistic, um, expressionistic uh, inspired uh, um, album. And we used like a dark German uh, uh, poetry uh, with that. And also some Wagner uh, uh, musical inspiration. So that was always differing us to the, let's say, uh, traditional death metal bands that we were much more extreme, uh, more technical, or having symphonic elements using German lyrics. Uh, you know, third album was called Blood, for example, uh, doing a vampire video in Transylvania. No other metal band did that before. You know, like on the castle stuff like that um, made this band probably outstanding in, in in not having it pushed in one direction. So. When we did like uh, projects with Lacrimosa or with Das Ich and, and, uh, and like stuff from the Gothic scene, that was of course like, wow, what's going on? And and then it, of course I remember it very well how it was going on in 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 the club scene over here in Europe. It was like kicking off a trend or something like that. And everybody said, oh, you have to stick to that. Yeah, but before they said you have to stick to a vampire. And before they have to stick to techno death metal, we yeah. were like, no, we, we don't stick to this or that. So we made, uh, you know, even a more brutal album like with Villains Craft. And later on, we had Work 80, which was becoming the biggest success. And I tell you, a lot of people telling me, oh, this, this, with, with this album, the band will be doomed. No, it was the biggest success. We were headlining Wacken and 18 other festivals with the run of the Work 80. So for us, but also this success, or how you would say, uh, stick to one thing and then you would be much more successful. I get this. There's probably, it would be for the band, uh, we would have probably have the traditional higher standard if you only stick to one thing. But it's not, uh, it's not the chemistry of the band. Uh, the, the, it's, it's, it's a different uh, approach. And I like musical challenges. I like to work with other artists. And uh, that's what I also do here in the studio. I do also video uh, uh, clips for, also for other bands and stuff. So I like to work as an artist and uh, I want to express myself and not for one Sean Ray alone. I want to do great music and new concepts. And mm -hmm. of course, this death metal, dark, brutal side of the band it will always stick with me. Because as you mentioned, I'm the guy who's like the founder and still in there as yeah. you know in this decades of existing with the band some people have private stuff or marriage or whatever and just cannot go on tour anymore and stuff like that you know whatever happens you know people change or have another 
goal in life than being on tour all the time. So uh, yeah, that that's that's natural. And uh, but for me, that's heritage of atrocity is above all the foundation of that. What I do, it's my lifestyle. It's also what I want to represent as an artist. And yeah, that that is something I'm also proud of. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Nice, nice to hear. All oh, uh, once one thing that I said is with the in two years or three years in 2025, you you have an, a career of four forty years of existence in instigator. So forty years, a lot, a lot of a lot of a lot of experience into there. So into this other, how do you see now the the changes into the music industry in the, in the music industry since the two thousand since to eighteen eighty five to now because you 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 see a lot of changes in very short times. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially now with the COVID situation, uh, I can tell you with, with my other band Leaves Eyes, we were releasing uh, our album, uh, The Last Viking, like when the whole madness was in full swing. So we had real problems also to go to places, to film our video clips. And when it was released uh, in Germany, we were like, top five in the in the in the trend charts and then the album couldn't be delivered so we ended up in the 20s or something in the charts it's not all about charts i'm just telling you and uh, it was physical pro product was hard to get out uh, some uh, parts of the world like in latin america for example it needed uh, uh, weeks or months until it was shipped there because they put it from air shipment to to uh, uh, to, to, to the sea, you know, to go by boat. I was like, okay, we are Vikings, so we can row it to South America, right? Uh, the new album or what's going on. But that was reality. And that's why this streaming and social media and all this has become even more powerful. It was like uh, this, this, this Corona situation was speeding up the change of it. Yeah. And it's, it, it's in a way, it's both. It's uh, you could say, okay, it's great. All bands can have like uh, whatever streams and or, or downloads and whatever, but it's also cursed because record labels uh, and 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 the traditional way of selling products, physical product, is is the way uh, how they can support the bands. If you want to be established and all that, so you need a record company, and uh, so it's like. You know, it's 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 like we are in in uh, living in uh, challenging times, and also for the whole music industry, with the touring and life situation, it was really hard. Uh, for example, we couldn't play, uh, uh, yeah, because of the war, we couldn't play in Russia, of course. Then there was a uh, uh, in the summertime, I got Corona, so there was no festival for us possible. That is really. It's it's a, a really a, a tough time at the moment, especially with the energy prices now going up, yeah. and uh, the cost of touring, it's brutal. And uh, also the clubs and the festivals, they have to see how they can bring back all the stuff they had, they need also to work uh, uh, with the logistics in uh, on, on on their festivals or venues. That's also a problem. A lot of people don't think about it. even <laughs> nightliner drivers. <laughs> they are rare nowadays as they had swapped to truck drivers or whatever or other jobs. But the good news is here, the metal family, the metal community, it's the best fan community in the world. We are international, uh, fuck the politics and all the madness. As you know, people like you and me, we, we, if we talk together, we are like on the same page. We we, yeah. we we can we share the same passion, lifestyle, all that. Also with the fans, and this is what I'm the most grateful. As we had like rough times, the fans were always there supporting us. Like even if we had now to push back another tour or festival, people say, "Don't worry, we will come next time. We're gonna see you and gonna support you." And this, I'm the most grateful person, because. Without the fans, it would be nothing. Mm -hmm. No, it's nice to keep up. That, that, that's true in so many ways because all bands are for the fans. That's that's true. That's a very true. So with this aspect of living in of living in the past, 
So did you ever think of touring with only the first two albums, Hallucinations and Todd and Suhek? Because it would be a good economic resource for the band. A <laughs> war that is now, as you can see, a war now is taking back the old releases, in the vinyl CDs, and a, and, a, and, a, and a full tour with full set list for football, for football albums. For, uh, for, for me, like me, like I hear in the first time in the 90s, these two albums, I remember, whoa, that's blown my mind. And with, with me, I, there is a lot of person. So I think this is, will be a great opportunity to, to, to take the opportunity to, to see both, both albums in set list, in foot list. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a request I got many, many times. <laughs> But at the <laughs> yeah, same yeah. time, I get other requests. Can you do only Work 80 tour? That's the same thing as with or can you bring your sister back, Yasmin, and do something like acoustic shows? And I think every album or every uh, concept or special show, whatever it is, needs a, a good time frame to do so. I, I wouldn't say we would not do that. Maybe that's a cool idea uh, to think about. But at the moment, we're thinking about the occult tours. And we're also going to play stuff from uh, Tour de Sehnsucht and also from Hallucinations. So don't worry about that. <laughs> But the thing is, um, at the moment, uh, for me, it's like, okay, the, the occult trilogy album circle is is complete but it's not over yet we do more videos we're going to do also the treasure hunt where people can uh, look for the 24 uh, karat golden cd um the bonus tracks and and uh the first treasure hunt was going on in europe in six countries i don't know might be still going so there's a lot of things also in the future for the occult stuff so that's what we focus on at the moment Okay, okay, well, nice to hear that. So, maybe we come, we, we come back to that idea. <laughs> I would not accept <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, okay. So, like, well, a curious thing that I saw on all your discography is that the first one was released by Nuclear Blast, then the second was released by Rod Runner. But since Blood to now, you are you are with Massacre Records no, no. since we 1994. Were, no, 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 we, we, we have been on Napalm Records also. Oh, wait, so, so it's with one album. <laughs> But more, mostly you are mostly more most mostly the albums are with Ma Massacre Records. So how do I you mean, see we were, at, we were at Massacre. I was also working for the label back then, until mm -hmm. um, a non plus al ultra album. Then we went to Universal Motor Records to the same guys. Uh, Rammstein uh, is signed to Mel Manson and Biscuit and all that. It was like after this huge success of Work 80, we got a lot of major companies uh, who wanted to sign the band, and we picked one and. I, The thing is, I'm not 100% sure if that was the best decision in our career. As an uh, international scene, we were always uh, distributed worldwide. And um, But after that, we, we signed to Napalm Records. And we are back uh, with a Massacre since Occult 2. So, but sorry, you wanted to ask me about Massacre. <laughs> no, 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 in general. Well, no, in general. well that, that's in general, because the band, the band always are in the top labels. With Naval Records, with Massacre Records, Nuclear Blast Records, Red Renix. You told me that you are one of the most mainstream labels with Limbisky, this kind of stuff. So, how do you see now the, the huge success the Atrocity has in all periods the, the change when you change a lot of the styles many times? Yeah, well, uh, for me, it was never that we changed the style or something. And like I explained, for me, it was more like we are metal band and we took cool music, <laughs> so to say. We just have another approach with that. So, uh, but I'm also, if you ask me, I'm also a death metal kid, of course. And atrocity in, in, in the source, in the core, is a death metal band. Of course, there's no doubt about it. It's just like that the concept of the band is different, that uh, we don't push ourselves in, 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 in one uh, limit or something like that, or one category. So um, it was not that we changed something. That was always a mis big misunderstanding. I understand it from the view of press or fans, but I was always the same guy. I was always the guy who was singing on Blue Blood, although I was singing maybe Shout, Shout, Let It All Out. <laughs> you know, but it, it's the same person. But the thing is, um, uh, we, we had, uh, yeah, uh, we had uh, with all the concepts and, Uh, albums we released, we had always uh, a, a strong label partners. That's true. 
And um, also now we're doing five videos uh, for the new record and we are top priority at the Massacre Records, which is uh, a company which is really cool. And yeah, that, that is something um, which also speaks for itself that the quality the band is delivering is on a is on a very good scale, I would say, a good level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other aspect that I not allow for since the since your second album, Toden Sucht, Toden Seten Sucht, Blood, and but a lot of a lot of names is that you put your names in German. So Blood, Willenskraut, Werk Axik, Werk Axik Axis, Occult, Occult 2 is Vag is Vai, Occult Vai Dry. So what are what do you opinion about now? The most mostly of the bands are using these aspects into the lyrics. They they talking in their language, Norway, Finland, German, and are more but but you start this aspect in 1992. Toden is in German name. It's not English. But what is your opinion about the a lot of bands are continuing your perhaps your idea? To, to speak in your language, but other bands has another 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 inclination to talk of this with an as with the nationalism. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that's the thing we what we were facing back in the day. So I remember when Total Sense came out, we had really problems. I mean, uh, in Europe, you know, some people say, oh, yeah, what is this? Why are you singing German? And why do you have a German album title? I remember in the Netherlands, somebody asked, are you Nazis? I said, no, what the hell? <laughs> and uh, we can destroy swastika on stage, so what else can you do? Um, and it was even long before, in 89 already, we did that the first time. But, um, yeah, the thing is, with, with, with that expressing yourself in your uh, mother tongue, so to say, uh, for some people it's a very great way to write their lyrics and stuff like that. And I found it also for myself very inspiring, especially, like I mentioned before, the expressionistic uh, poetry after the uh, First World War, like from the German and the French side, we have a lot of uh, uh, poets writing their nightmares from, from the trenches when they were fighting in the, on the battlefield. And uh, to, you know, to handle all the trauma, they were writing this great poetry. Poetry is very dark. And uh, that was also an inspiration for me. I said, yeah, that, that the German lyrics might even sound great and harsh in, in the context with metal. And that was my decision, like because the sound of German sounds great to to metal music. You see that with Rammstein, it's huge success. Yeah. Although probably most of the people don't understand all the lyrics, they they are big fans of of this band because it just suits so well. By the way, also uh, uh, I'm friends uh, with, with uh, Christoph and Rammstein, and uh, I was visiting them on on the uh, stadium tour and so forth, and. Um, yeah, we also talked about that. Yeah, he said, oh, yeah, I trust it was always this band with this evil German lyrics. <laughs> I said, yeah, we're still, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I think there's the next guy who wants to call for an interview. But anyway, we are not finished yet. So, um, yeah, yeah. I can, yeah, no, it's also on Skype, so I cannot pick up. <laughs> anyway, so let's go, let's continue then. Uh, until no, we okay. are finished. Okay, okay, because, well, well, you are you are a guy with a lot of experience in the music industry. You told me I love your experience in a few seconds ago. So for that, and then relating to this, uh, I related to this, well, Okul has 10 songs. Well, for, for, for me, for a metalhead from the, I'm 42, I love to hear all music since the beginning to now. With 1 to 10, I prefer to hear the music. That's the way that I, that I raise up so since the beginning to now. So, but... The new generation, uh, especially talking about 25 people or 20, 20 years old, they love to do the playlist. As you can see yeah, now, yeah, yeah. this, yeah, this yeah. playlist, they are returning to the to the 40s and 50s when the music is spread by just by singles. Yeah, and yeah, for yeah, that, yeah. Uh, and for that, for you, if we try to relate these aspects, for you, which song or which songs represent or capture whole essence from this occult tree? Actually. I think Desecration of God is perfect. That was our first single and video. It's it's showing like, yeah, a wide spectrum of the music from Occult. And um, I think that's probably also uh, 
has a very uh yeah very intense and strong uh musical part but also the video was 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 having a great impact uh for the people and everybody was celebrating yeah they cannot wait for the occult three album when they heard that song I think that's a very, very good song to represent uh, the, the the Occult Free album. Okay, okay. So and in one well, now, well, Atrocity has a long and solid career along the years. And for that, how do you see now the extreme metal scene nowadays? Because it's too saturated with a lot of productions, albums, EPs, videos, singles, a lot of bands. So what is your opinion now the extreme metal scene? I mean, I think it's it. For me, if it's not a sellout or something like the 90s, there was a problem uh, suddenly, you know, it, it was exploding so fast and big that it was also becoming uh, this kind of trend thing, what I didn't like so much about it. But what can you do? Like, like in a way, you want to reach out to a lot of people and, and you want that uh, the band's getting established and not only being in the underground and we, we all like, we're knowing each other more or less uh, from, from the scene back then. So all, all the bands from Carcass, Moby, the Angel, or the East Side, uh, Obituary, uh, Cannibal Corpse, you know, and so forth. So um, actually, we were also happy that this is happening, you know, also from Germany, Morgov, you know, that that that, that was like uh, for everybody a absolutely fantastic time, golden days of death metal. But then, if something goes blowing up so fast and big, there's always also a negative side. And suddenly people complain about the music and, oh, it's all the same, it's all boring, blah, blah, blah. And for me, I was like, well, when we did the Hallucinations album, we already did that for whatever, five years or something like that. So what they talk about. It's it's a musical style. It's like, you know, rock and roll can be also boring or pop or whatever other genres. Um, it's a genre. If you don't like it, don't listen to it or whatever. But it was like coming a little bit back like a boomerang for, 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 for the scene. And now I think in the way it's going on now, um, I think it's 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 going fine as um there are a lot of new bands. There's like always um, this kind of, uh, how you say that, approach still to shock and still to make extreme music and having like uh, also like uh, fantastic shows and with a lot of energy and all that. And I think it, it, it it's it's not shrinked to a, a healthy level or something. As you said, it's, it's saturated with too many releases, too many singles and all that. But on the other side, or albums or bands, on the other side, I remember times when we were like kind of the only ones here, <laughs> yeah, uh, in Germany with some other bands, and no clubs wanted to book us. They were like, "Oh my God, what's this?" And you know, uh, and now nowadays, the people can go out and play in their clubs. They are booking death metal festivals. Mm -hmm. All that. I had to do it myself back then. I had to actually do. Uh, own tour, Carcass Atrocity. <laughs> I was a young kid, uh, death metal festivals and all that. So that's a huge difference. Uh, for that, we should be glad that it's like still going and being vital. Okay, okay. The next question is one thing that you said a little thing because you saw the death metal scene in 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 Germany grow so because you are one of the first bands into there since 1995 with instigator then Atros. then why the next question is I, I I think you imagine this question why the German death metal is in doesn't have a huge potential like the Finland death metal is seen like Swedish death metal is seen like the one well, like the Brazilian is you know like the US because these scenes has own their own sounds. You, you you can hear bands from Finland are the same, Swedish, etc. etc. But from from a, from German, it's very weird because you have a very very powerful thrash metal, power metal, heavy metal, but dead metal and black metal are missed and lost in time. So why this why this happened in, in since the beginning yeah. to now? The thing is, I, I got this kind of question before, or I was talking to someone. 
uh, about it. Uh, and the funny part is here, it's because, you know, like the pioneers, like Petrosley and Morgorf, they didn't only stick to one genre or something like that. But Morgorf also changed the law. And then we, we are still going on. They, they were splitting up. And then that, that is like a little bit the thing. And uh, but I, there are people they say that's like atrocity style or whatever. Even the Slipknot guys told me. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are big fans also from Hallucinations and 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 Tony Sanchez, or Mick at least. And Joey was, uh, Joey was telling me once that he played on the cassette. He had Hallucinations on the other side. He had uh, Longing for Death. They, in, in the US it was called Longing for Death instead of Tony Sanchez by Roadrunner. Um, and yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, here you go. But um, he said he was rehearsing with that back in the day. So people, they see it more to the band than to having this is German, uh, typical German death metal. For me, this kind of Wagner dark atmosphere in all this more dark and, and, and depth in the music, that's for me is like this German thing, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and you have maybe melodic death metal from Sweden, we have like this uh, more fresh kind death metal from Florida or America and from Germany and the British, they have the kind of motorhead aspect of death metal. <laughs> if you have like Benediction or Bofro, I don't know if you can say it like that, but just, you know, to make a kind of comparison categories, which, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of that. But, you know, if you want to say so, we have the kind of little bit more symphonic background more this dark and 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 like a Todesehnsucht, it's like a red line. It's this is yeah. very dark and 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 and, and deep uh, kind of expression, like in, in in kind of Wagner music. But I think I have to go to the next interview. <laughs> he tries. Yeah. To call the call. Yes. We have yes. a, a last question for me. Yes, yes, yes. Well, well, well. Uh, well I have two qu two last questions. Well, no. for uh, what are the future plans that the band has? For this new occult tree, perhaps well, you told me that you will do more videos, perhaps a Latin American tour. Who knows in the next next year or perhaps 2024? Who knows? Yeah, that is something uh, would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's for sure. We have a new booking agent uh, that we want to go back on the road. That we want to play festivals. Already first ones coming in, and that we want to really celebrate this new great album. By the way, how do you like the occult tree album? Yes, yes, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. So, well, well, Alex, it's that time to arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoy this one like me doing this. You are a terrific guy. I really, really, really amazing to talk with you. I hope someday we'll see Atrocity Live. If not there, if not in Germany, we'll, I will see here because I really love to hear some songs from Hallucination or Thoden Sucht because we really love that whole album. Okay. And perhaps you want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalerium followers. Yeah, thank you so much for the support. Uh, I cannot thank everyone enough for that. And, you know, I hope with this new album Occult, we have some great music you can enjoy live and switch out the crazy world around you. <laughs>